We hadn't been able to get anywhere near Stonewood for years. Welcome to Premier Scene, but more importantly, welcome to The Punch. That's the name of the premiere of which I'm at today. From executive producer Ridley Scott, this film has perfected pulse pounding crime and exquisitely shot action. So let's speak to the actors as well as BAFTA nominated director about their latest endeavor. So when you take him down this time, you take him down hard. He's an ex-criminal in that he's put his criminal past behind him, he's retired to Iceland, he's out of the game. What then happens is he gets a call from his son, who is in trouble in London, and he has to come back. Unfortunately, that reawakens the interest of a detective played by James McAvoy, because they had a run-in a few years before, and a cat-and-mouse chase starts around London. In a recent interview, you said that a film tends to be based a lot on the director and the actor's relationship. So what's been your relationship with Iran throughout this project? Well, it's been very good. He's become a friend, and I think that's always very useful. Um, uh, you need a director to be your mate behind the camera because you need to believe them when they tell you something needs to be dialed up or taken down or you know if they give you any direction at all you've got to trust them and uh, I, I trust them. And it's based, a lot of the filming is in Canary Wharf so it's very close to home for us. What do you think that gives the movie as opposed to it being a Hollywood blockbuster straight away that we don't necessarily relate to as well? Well a lot of films that get made in London or even in the UK tend to only live here they don't travel, so you think uh, you know action thrillers are very rarely made. We make rom-coms, we make period drama, that's what travels. But what he's done with this, which is really clever, is he's made it look international. London happens to be the setting, but it's not London-centric. It looks like an international movie. It's really sleek, it's well designed, and um, hopefully it'll appeal to others. Last night a man was picked up suffering from a gunshot wound to the stomach. Is Jacob Sternwood's son. My first film, Shifty, was a sort of social realistic movie about kind of uh, my, a similar to graphical tale about where I'd grown up. But this movie is much more in line with the films that I grew up loving. Like I used to love the sort of John Woo movies of the late 80s, early 90s, the sort of heroic bloodshed era. And we just went out and I, I kind of I wrote this screenplay, which is a homage to my love of Hong Kong action cinema, basically. I read that in one of your interviews and as well, we've got Ridley Scott as one of the exec producers. Did he have much input in this film? Yeah, he did. Like we needed something because my first film was a very sort of low budget um, microwave film that cost a hundred grand. So we needed somebody like uh, Ridley Scott to come on board as the executive producer and just give the project traction and like get it off the ground. And it really did. And he, I flew out to LA. I met him. He loved the screenplay and he liked my first film, Shifty. And he came on board and just and decided to. And when Ridley Scott picks up the phone and said he's going to champion someone, people listen to him. And in so many of the reviews, it says it picks up on the fact that there's a moral complexity there among, especially Mark's character. Yeah. Is that what you were intending to happen? I think so. I wanted to make characters that were slightly more three-dimensional than you see in the, in the, in the, in the modern crime thriller. And I hope we wanted to make something that was more aspirational, that was a more of a classy thriller that aspired to the sort of films that they make in America and France. And yeah, and, and so I gave a lot of their characters backstory and a big history and just made it as, you know, as complex and three-dimensional as I could. And I did his first movie, Shift a few years back and I think what he's tried to do is combine all the character nuances that you saw in that film but apply it on a much bigger scale which this is with obviously a much bigger budget but um, I mean if you like your action films this is really gonna uh, satisfy you but also the most important thing it's character led so you become involved in the narrative and uh, it really engage with the characters and he was saying in a lot of interviews that the reason he's done this film is because of the success from Shifty. Yeah. So are they similar in any way? Has been, what lessons do you think, as being in both, has he taken yeah. from the first one and yeah. used in this one? Well, the, the key to him is the fact that he had such a huge success with Shifty. And I know that he had lots of lucrative t TV offer, offers and for which he then turned down because he was adamant that he just wanted to sit out and make his own material and write his own script so I really sort of commend him for that but you know at the same time it's he, he's got a great love of actors and um, and three dimensional characters and bringing that to the screen so I think you know it's a marriage of both those things Stop Can you just take a step back for a minute? Tell me a bit about your character, if that's okay with you. Yeah, a bit about my character. Your character, yes. Oh, um, Without the giving too much away. Yeah, well, I was just saying, I always hate it on interviews when actors 
act like sort of amateur psychologists, you know? And they say, well, he's very deep and he's very dark and he had a traumatic childhood. And I don't know, you know, he's, the, he's um, it's a good old fashioned cops and robbers movie. And um, the character I play is a, a baddie, essentially, you know? And uh, hopefully he's a bit more layered than that. But um, I, 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 we find out as soon as we meet him, he's, he's kind of dark. And, uh, and in a lot of the reviews, it's saying that this film wants to be internationally appealing. So what elements does it possess that's going to make it that film? Well, I mean, it looks beautiful. I'll say that. It looks, um, you know, we, we make great movies in this country. And I think at the top end of the scale, we make beautiful, lush movies. And then at the lower end of the scale, we make brilliant kitchen sink dramas, you know, gritty sort of handheld films. And so this is somewhere in between, you know, this is, um, it looks really beautiful, I think. And um, whether that appeals to people abroad, I don't know. Hopefully they like all our films. But, um, uh, you know, uh, beyond that, it's hard for me to say, really. As actors, we just go and you just try to try find a truth in it, you know. And um, if you find a truth, I, I think anyone anywhere will like it. You know, if you, uh, if you can find a truth in your characters and in the storyline, then uh, however the film looks, you can probably... There's crime, there's action in this movie. Do you really believe the narrative's there to grip a very broad audience? Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of different flavours in it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it again tonight, but when I first saw it, um, it was a rough edit, but it, was, um, it surprised me the different, you know, there's a lot of action from the start, and you think, okay, this is an action movie. But then you've got people like James and uh, Mark Strong, Peter Mullen, you know, Andrea Riseborough, with some heavyweight actors. So they bring a depth to it, I think, which is um, adds adds a, a different tone. Um, and then there's some funny moments in it, you know, and it's comedy. Uh, yeah, there's some some moments in there where you don't see them coming, and you just think, bloody. And that's kind of interesting. Um, so it's hard to pigeonhole it, you know, but hopefully that's a good thing. I, I'd say, you know, get your popcorn and sit back and enjoy it. You know, it's one of those films. Um, it's a good night out of the pictures, I think. Max is an inch away from piecing all this together. Maybe it's not all about Jacob Stonewood. So that's my first question as a female. How do you interpret this film? Because we've heard all about the bangs and the action. Yeah, well, I mean, I, mean, I only play a, a tiny role in it. I mean, I play uh, Dean's nan, and I'm very... Um, innocent of all what's going on I have no idea I don't even know that there's a gun up my head and you know and I think that all the uh, people that come in the house are his best friends and actually they're his enemies I also as my character has no idea that um, that Dean is an awful person she thinks he's lovely a lovely grandson so um, you know uh, yeah, she's the one innocent person in the whole film because I think all everyone else is uh, pretty. Um, yeah. So, do you think, as a female, this film will appeal to the female audience because it has got that moral uh, like complexity there with the characters? You want to understand James's character in particular. Yeah, and I, you know, and I, I, I think that the the acting is fantastic. I think you know, Mark James. They're fantastic in it, you know. I, I, you know, I mean, as, as uh, watching it, I didn't feel, oh, this is a bloke's film, you know, because sometimes you do, you think, oh, gold, you know. But um, no, but you do. There's a narrative there to attract everyone. I, I think so. Yeah, I do think so. I think it's, uh, and it's got, you know, it's got that touch to it. It's, you know, I mean, it does, and it's got that chase. I mean, it's exciting. No, I think, I think it'll appeal. Well, my character's dead before we even learn his name, really, to be honest. Um, I'm in here very briefly, but it was for me it was really important to be part of Iran's new film because I did his first film, Shifty, and I think he's an amazing talent. And um, although I was working when they were filming this, I was like, please, mate, throw me anything, please, please. It's like, Jay, there isn't enough anything. And I was, but we managed to work out that there was one guy who died in a day. So um, that's who I'm playing. So before you know his name, boom, he's gone. I've never had that answer before. <laughs> there you go, there you go, I'm dead on it. And this movie, it's almost like, London's almost a character. It's so much there, it's so present, and yeah. you really notice that when you're watching it. So why do you think Aran chose London as the backdrop? I think Ronnie writes all the films that he makes, he writes. And he writes about, to as much as he can, writes about what he knows about. And, um, you know, the city where he lives, he lives on the Isle of Dogs and, you know, all that part of London which he walks his dog on, you've never really seen film. And, you know, I think that's been really interesting. And I think he made a real sort of conscious effort not to film like London post boxes and, uh, you know, black taxis and, you know, all the sort of 
things we're used to seeing. So, you know, he's got aspirations for the film of being a kind of global Michael This Mann is the thing that a lot of reviews have picked up on, the global element of yeah. this film, that it's going to go international, it's not going to be London-based. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, that's... Rani's not interested in making a little movie. He's interested in making a film that's on 5,000 screens worldwide. He's interested in making films that take $100 million plus, And that's his thing, you know, that's his... People have... Actually, that's not true. That's not his only interest, but on this film it is. He wanted to make a big budget uh, international movie and I think he's delivered, you know, for the money he had and uh, the uh, modicum of talent he had, I think he's done a bloody good job. As a director, have you really been able to see, I know you didn't feature as much in the film, but have you seen him grow as a director? You know, nominated yeah, for a BAFTA this year, the future's looking bright. He's, he's, got, he's got a huge amount of energy. Uh, standing right next to us now. So. <laughs> so you won't really hear what I'm saying, because he's so like bombastic and huge and... But he's great, he's great fun to be around. And you'll see, have you interviewed him yet? Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a ball of energy and great fun to be around. And his, his, uh, his daughter, his daughter is, his missus is my missus' best friend. So we spend a lot of time together. See, we're going on about the, the moral complexity. There's already relationships there and you already know him really well. Yeah. We're all family, that's the truth. That's the truth of it. And do you think James and Mark have really done these characters justice? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, you don't get better than Mark and James. Just, you just don't. I mean... Every time I see McAvoy, I go, man, he's a good actor, man. He's a good actor. Mark, obviously, you know, Mark's, Mark's amazing. I mean, I just saw him in uh, Catherine Bigelow's movie. He's a mate, you know, I know Mark well. He works so much, I didn't even know he was in it. I did know he was in it, I forgot. And I'm watching him, and I'm going, it's Mark. You know, so I mean, that's, you know, he's a chameleon. That's the way it should be. We just lit off some fireworks where we're at it. I was involved in his first film, Shifty, and uh, he, and I'd heard about you know this new movie that he was making. I'm sort of like, where's the phone call? And, uh, and then he rolled me up, and he was like, Mash, Mash, he said, I'm doing this movie, mate. It's got McAvoy, it's got Mark Strong, it's got Andrew Rise, bro. I said, I said, Riley, stop talking. I'm in, mate. You know, and I, I just swept the floor for him. He went, look. Jason, he said, you know, it, it's all older than you, really. There's no young parts in there, but I'd love you to do this little cameo. And I said, yeah, of course, mate. So, yeah, I just feel really sort of privileged to be involved with, you know, a young actor in British film and working with all these amazing people. Um, yeah, I'm over the moon. So, yeah. How do you think he came to the decision to cast James and Mark? Being in the movie, do you think that fitted perfectly? Yeah, uh, I think, firstly, they're bloody brilliant. Um, and I think I know they were, I know Iran from the start, I know they were after some really great actors that bring a bit of class and integrity and I think he definitely got that with, with McAvoy and Mark Strong and I think they're both, you know, incredible British actors that are doing really well on a global, you know, on a global scale. So it's really exciting to be involved in a film like that. But yeah, no, I think he cast it, even from the script, I mean he cast it absolutely spot on. Yeah. What's your opinion on the narrative? Do you really think that it will grip this international appeal that he's going for? I hope so. I mean, cinematically, without a question. I've never seen a movie look so stunning uh, based on London. I mean, it makes London look like a, a Hong Kong city. You know, it's, it, it just looks in incredible. So visually, they've completely pushed the boundary. You said to me this was a, a 50 million pound American movie. I said 100% yes, definitely. So on that level, 100%. And then casting people that have all got international caliber, like your Strongs and your McAvoy's and Andrew Riseborough, hopefully, please, God, it, 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 will, it will do. Yeah. How do you think he got the inspiration for writing this movie after Shifty? Because he said, yeah, I just sat down and I thought, what movie do I want to make for a film buff? I've got no idea how Riley come up with that because he's, he's mental, but brilliantly mental. But he um, he's such a film fan. Right, if you if you follow him on Twitter, if you're if you're a film fan, you should follow him on Twitter because he's he's just you can you can just see that he's so passionate about film and he's always watching these sort of mad films that I've never even heard of. Um, so absolutely, like yeah. So I think he's his sort of inspirations come from a whole range of, of places. So he probably says, oh, "I want to make a mad movie that looks like Singapore." Okay, done. He'd written something on his hand. Punch one one nine. Get down! Well, after speaking with all the actors and Aaron Creevy himself, it seems clear that this film will certainly go global. So don't miss it. Go to the cinema and check it out. I'm Sarah Hartel and you've watched Premier Scene.